Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm truly impressed by the industry of the Senator of uh, Narok. If the recommendations that he has proposed in this motion could be approved by this House, it would be a profound statement on the way forward to solve the problem of pending bills. Taking over from where the Senator of Kitui has left, how can we say that this House serves to protect counties and county governments when we have allowed the county of Nairobi to all people who have actually delivered goods and services a whopping 107 billion shillings. We are failing, Mr. Speaker. And when the governor is invited to come before the house, he shows us the middle finger. I have chaired one such a meeting where we were forced to fine him half a million shillings. And in another meeting chaired by the Senate of Kiambu, again, a similar punishment was dished out to him. Mr. Speaker, this will require that we take this initiative by the Senator of uh, Narok further so that we can achieve what America achieved soon after the First World War. Soon after the First World War, Mr. Speaker, America improved its infrastructure by in encouraging local entrepreneurs. They blocked out companies from Europe from coming to do business in the U.S. And in the process, the monies that were used, borrowed and otherwise, by local entrepreneurs in the United States of America opened up the economy of America to, to debt. America is the biggest economy in the world. If we are going to read from that, Mr. Speaker, we are therefore saying, if we push counties to pay entrepreneurs, we will open up the economies of all our 47 counties, especially if we also add a rider, that contracts must be given to local people in a county unless the expertise for doing a particular project does not exist within that particular county, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it reminds me, the day before yesterday, on 22nd of April, on Monday, in Kakamega, thanks for the responsibility this House gave me, I carried out an oversight function at the Kakamega Golf Hotel, where I invited all creditors to the county government of Kakamega to whom pending bills are due, to come so that we could workshop together. And allies, Mr. Speaker, we invited the county assembly, we invited the county executive, they did not come. The documents we were using, Mr. Speaker, in that meeting were submitted by the governor of Kagamega to the Finance and Budget Committee. So we had wondered this credit has to come and verify those lists, Mr. Speaker, and validate. The governor saw no sense in coming. Instead, he went and petrol influence at the police station, and the police had the audacity to come and storm the hotel so as to disperse us, Mr. Speaker. It was a very low moment for this house. A very low moment. I have decided that I'll keep the course and allow the people of Kakameka to make their own decision about this. Mr. Speaker, one of the companies presented documents in that great meeting where the old man, he's in his 80s, is one of the most successful business people in Kakamega, he's owed 250 million shillings. And that does not bother the governor. Mr. Speaker, the recommendation in this uh, motion where the 
Senator of Narok is putting, for example, uh oh, where has it gone? Yes, here it is, Mr. Speaker. Where the Senator of Narok is attempting to say, if this particular amount of money is owed, let it be cleared with this financial year, he's starting a conversation. And I want to challenge myself, challenge the Finance and Budget Committee, and challenge the entire House. That let us carry this uh, conversation further so that we help all the counties of Kenya. In Nairobi, therefore, it means if people were to wait for all the 20 billion that we give Nairobi to be given out to them, some companies will be paid five years later. It's, we are failing. I had a sitting with the control of budget in our office over this. And she told me, you guys, help us. Mr. Speaker, the tragedy of this problem is that if you go to the countryside, many, many projects have stalled because contractors cannot continue. You come to Kakamega, our first governor, Stated Bukongo Stadium, it has stalled, pending bills. Teaching and referral hospital, it has stalled, pending bills. Hayaka Market, Shinyalu Market, Ekolomani Market, they have stalled because of pending bills. The Hayaga, Shinyalu, Chepsonoi Road, it has stalled because of pending bills. And Mr. Speaker, sir, when we raise these issues, governors are quick to run and say they want my seat. Who told governors that they have seats? Those seats belong to the people of those respective counties, and they have the choice to renew their contract or throw them out so that more competent people can take over after a circle of five years. Mr. Speaker, I hear you. Amen. Mr. Speaker, if we are not firm as parliament, we'll either throw our country into instability like what is happening in West Africa. The outdated way of change of government is now back in Africa. We are now seeing coup d'etats because the militaries are waiting to see the institution of parliament ensure that constitutions are working and when they give up, they use unconstitutional means. How can we be a country, Mr. Speaker, sir, with due respect to myself and the government that I love and I serve? How can we be a country where we see nothing wrong with seeing doctors carrying twigs and leaves in streets when the same doctors are supposed to be in hospital treating people? How can we be a country, Mr. Speaker, where business people make presentations, formal that they were forced to deliver fertilizer, Mr. Speaker, in a conduit that has resulted in Kenyans being sold fake fertilizer. How can we see nothing wrong with it? And we are happy that the Minister of Agriculture is today sitting in office, sitting pretty, when he's responsible for the mess of the sale of counterfeit fertilizer. If the Lord Almighty can speak to C.S. Linturi, C.S. Linturi should resign at the end of my speech. He's not fit to be a minister of agriculture. How do you sell fake fertilizer to the same people who voted for you? Even if we want to get rich quickly, then let us work a little bit hard. You cannot get rich, get rich 
simply by mixing her, it was Dr. Martin Luther King who said, who said that if you are accused of breaking the law, when the law you are accused to be breaking is a bad law, then that is the highest respect of the law. Yes, the deputy speaker is right. I'm out of order. But the law that makes what I'm doing to be out of order is a bad law, and therefore my defying it is the greatest respect of law. I therefore, I therefore withdraw those remarks, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I therefore, Mr. Speaker, withdraw those remarks. And I tell the deputy speaker, it's on, it's on the way, it's coming. This, the Senate Agriculture Committee is sister of this matter. In the National Assembly is sister of this matter. In fact, this weekend they are in Kakamega. They are on the case. The report will come and I'll be vindicated. Mr. Speaker, I say these things because, uh, forget about the minister. I say these things because if you go to a place like Kandui, in Bungoma, where Senator Edwin Sifuna comes from, there is this woman who has got one acre of land, and she's a mamamboga. For her to raise 2,500 out of selling vegetables, enough to buy fertilizer to plant that one acre, is very tight. So when she succeeds, and then we should change them through what we call in Kluya Mafwenyi, Mr. Speaker, uh, is corruption. Mr. Speaker, it's very unfortunate. I hope in the fullness of time that we will serve the people of Kenya. It's a privilege for all of us, wherever we are, elected. It doesn't matter which office, once you are elected. It's a privilege for you to be there. Because those people has, had an option to elect the man or woman you defeated. Tell me who, including the president, was elected and opposed in this country. Mr. Speaker, I support this initiative. By